you and your family are safe and taking all the precautions. At the outset, I would like to thank the FIKI team led by Mr. Rahul and Mr. Atul to organize such a timely webinar. We are going through unprecedented times. An invisible tiny enemy has brought our economy to a standstill. Most of the world is under lockdown. More importantly, it is anticipated that it will bring fundamental change in the way we deal with others and conduct business. The lockdown was so sudden that most of us did not anticipate it and were caught by surprise. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. Everyone rushed to work from home to keep the operations running, which are so interdependent in the world today. However, we were not prepared for it and organizations did not have the infrastructure and security in place to allow so many people to work from home. Most of it happened overnight. Now this has given an open field to the cyber criminals. Under the disguise of COVID-19, they are luring us to exploit our vulnerabilities. Attackers are taking advantage of the fact that many people working from home don't have the same level of security as their corporate office. The vast majority of cyber attacks, by some estimates, 98% deploy social engineering methods. Cyber criminals are extremely creative in devising new ways to exploit users and technology to access passwords, networks and data, often capitalizing on very popular topics and trends to tempt users into unsafe online behavior. Today, I'm glad to introduce to you Colonel Indrajit Singh, who is an expert info systems professional with experience of more than 27 years across wide spectrum of areas spanning telecom, IT infrastructure management, info security, risk management, cyber security, cyber forensics, and cyber warfare. Colonel Singh is an alumni of IIT Kharagpur and Symbiosis Institute of Management Pune. He has a glorious career of three decades as an information security professional and is currently the chief cyber security officer and head of the cyber security center of excellence at Vara Technologies. He is working on disruptive technologies in the cyber security space for securing IT networks, smart cities. Let us hear from the expert today that how to protect ourselves from the cyber threats and frauds. Friends, we have a large audience today and I would request you to keep posting your questions and we will select the questions at the end of presentation. Let's listen to Colonel Singh, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Patwari, and uh, thanks uh, Rahul and Mr. Atul uh, for holding this webinar, which is really the required theme for any webinar or any discussions to happen. And uh, as brought out by Mr. Patwari, that uh, we were all taken aback when it happened that we are all going to be working from home and it's going to be a lockdown situation. And uh, nobody thought that how we are going to you know, uh, work from home in this situation. Uh, most of the time uh, we were very comfortable with all the risk management and business continuity. We used to talk in all the boardrooms and primarily you know, when it came, uh, it's the time when we really had to check over what's our risk management, what's our business continuity, what's our cyber resilience, what's our uh, you know, uh, uh, data access policies. So those paper activities primarily you know, turned into actual reality. Uh, where we are trying and really, you know, it's struggling. Most of the companies are primarily struggling to make everyone work from home without any disruption. Uh, when I say the disruptions, uh, the hackers as well have got very active in the last couple of months since January. I'll show you how the things have changed and what's happened in the last one or two months. And uh, uh, they are also active on the weakness which they have found 
in the complete you know uh, uh, community as a as a whole and uh, trying to exploit the community and they are aware that the people are not much cyber security savvy they are not security savvy so they are trying to exploit those weaknesses right so during our talk today what i am trying to bring out is what's the threats which have come up what are the frauds or what are the scams which are there you know we are encountering day in and day out uh, maybe you your colleague they all encountering it what are those what are the malwares how these are these uh, are malwares are been in, you know planted what are they doing and then we'll also come up as to what's your policy as as a company level as a cybersec you know uh, officer uh, what do you need to do how you need to go about it how you need to uh, you know perform your uh, duties and some bit of uh, the good words about uh, how to go and the way forward about it so you know taking on uh, to the first slide where you know uh, just in the morning when i was reading that there are almost 100 million ma mails when when they are scanning through and there are 18 million mails last week every day are having a malware or the phishing scams which are there and 240 million mails are just on the scams or the spams which are coming into the email box so uh, just see the amount of mails and the methodology which hackers have been following in last couple of months right and most of the malware attacks now they are all centralized uh, as a covid 19 you know news charity uh, or uh, the cure or the vaccines which we are very much like uh, wanting to look to it we want to listen to it and you know the challenges are also emanating on how critical and sensitive data being treated by employees across the board so uh, the, the there's a huge amount of data which has got exposed of the companies which nobody thought so because we always were in a parameterized environment the data of any company never moved out of it barring a couple of people who were authorized to use kind of that kind of data today we are exposing the data away from that perimeter so we practically don't have any perimeter in the company it's porous so how do we really secure that endpoint which the user is using you know uh, of the company or his byod right so uh, that's where the challenge is going to be like i brought out we always spoke of business continuity plan right we never put it to test and this is the right time to test it we spoke of vpns but now that requirements of vpn has gone you know huge how do we handle that right so those are the challenges which have actually been encountered by us today and when it comes to uh, the studies which have happened in last couple of uh, last month where 92 percent of the cios expect uh, covid 19 to have a significant significant business impact and this is what we are seeing today all the businesses have come to a halt we are really struggling to kick start the business in the manner which used to do it right and uh, uh, even i look at from the buying and the selling process of any company so there also the sentiments are very weak so companies are going to be very slow in buying products they're going to be you know uh, taking uh, due caution as to what product to buy how to you know protect their networks what products are to be bought in next six months or so so uh, that thought process is also coming into place coming on you know uh, some of the the facts which have happened uh, very recently and just to put you in a perspective uh, there was a hack attack which happened in czechoslovakia czech republic correction and uh, last month and they uh, had put the complete hospital to the halt they had to uh, primarily stop all the surgeries because their systems were hacked by the hacker and the ransomware was being asked for then you have the elite hackers which have been targeting who organization on and off you have malware attacks on who you have the phishing attacks on who you have applications which have been replicated of the who so uh, those kind of elite hackers you know they are kind of getting into it then is the e-commerce side so you know, people are actually getting onto the e-commerce side and uh, that's really very high almost 26 percent increase in web skimming in the march itself right then uh, we all are aware of uh, 
the video conferencing app uh, like Zoom, WebEx, Skype, GoToMeeting, and Slack, and join me and all. But they are also not devoid of it uh, of the threats. So they're almost 100, 120,000, right? Uh, malware and adware attacks which have happened on these sites altogether. And uh, uh, the most talked about Zoom. So Zoom bombing, I hope everybody would, would have heard about it, where uh, attacker actually comes into your Zoom uh, conference and comes up with some racial comment or some pornographic videos posting in it. So that's the challenge which is happening. And, and uh, what worse could happen, almost 5 lakh credentials of Zoom have been sold in the dark web very recently. OK, and these credentials like even if they are the security is uh, the Zoom is saying that we are taking care of the security. This credentials can be used for the DOS attack and prank as Zoom bombing. So the things are far from over when we come on to the Zoom. Even when we come on to the scams, FBI in fact uncovered there was a fraud scheme which came up and uh, which was selling around 39 million masks from it to uh, California Union, which never reached. Right. And Interpol, in fact, there was a, is a, there's a complete white paper on this. There's a all hospitals and healthcare organizations are most vulnerable to all the ransomware attacks. Right. So hospitals, they know that uh, the security is not as compared to any other organization. So, and at this point in time, any ransomware attack on a hospital will be really, you know, a problematic. And this is what the hackers are onto. They are, you know, targeting these organizations. And what happened just in the month of uh, from the Jan to March, you had uh, 907K, uh, you know, total messages related to COVID-19, which are being floating around. There are 737 malware which have been detected related to COVID-19. 48,000 hits on militia URL committed to COVID-19. 220x is the increase in spams from February to March. You see the amount of spams which have gone up is so phenomenal. And you would have also been noticing uh, in your mailboxes uh, how much of the spam mails are getting to the spam folder. And there is a 260% increase in malicious URL hits from February to March 220. Right, so uh, the, the, what the estimates show and how the threat actors are leveraging the COVID-19, uh, we'll be discussing about it. So, you know, uh, there are almost a 600% rise in the phishing mails, which has come up. And these phishing attacks are amongst, like uh, around the three themes. One is around scamming, uh, second is around uh, brand impersonation and third is the business email compromise. So I'll be discussing what percentage they are affected. So we'll be discussing on that and and the hackers are very smart. All these campaigns are in multiple language. They have multiple attachments to it. That means they are having a very wide horizon when they're attacking. OK, so uh, they, are, they are very focused what they're doing. And uh, of late, you would have also seen that there are a number of Android apps which have come up in the Play Store, which have the capability to steal your data, encrypt your uh, device, and ask for ransomware. And something more, you know, uh, this global pandemic has led to creation of more than one lakh new COVID web domains which have come up in last one and a half months. And most of them are with suspicion. Not all of them are malicious, but yes, a lot of, the, of them are with the uh, malicious intent. So they are like covidhack.com or covidhelp.com or covid, you know, um, uh, pandemic.com. So there's a, the first word is a covid or corona and followed by the extension. So there, there are so many domains which have come up and just see, I've been able to put it on a view for it as to number of domains starting from February when it actually started to, uh, to we could have the data till March and you can see day on day the number of domains which have come up. OK, in the top and in the bottom, what you see is practically, you know, 
the domains which are there in total. So when I say more than one lakh, uh, it's it's a huge number uh, which which is there today, right? Similarly, you know, uh, coronavirus COVID-19 has led to the email scams and this percentage also has increased phenomenally. So phishing mails is one of the major tool for delivering all the ransomware, the malwares, the Trojans. So uh, these are the ones which are very uh, as, as a tool which are being used by the hackers. Something good, uh, you know, uh, what we have seen is while the domains came up, the SSLs also have increased. So uh, if you look on, uh, look in from January onwards, uh, there are almost 6,000 domains which have come up and they asked for the Corona uh, host name, you know, uh, SSL certificate pertaining to that. So those number of SSL certificates also have been, you know, sold in last two months. Coming on to the spear phishing, so when, when it came to the sample of, you know, uh, 4 lakh uh, 67,000 spear phishing mails, uh, which were attacked and the the rise which you see from the February it was picking up and in the March it has gone up to peak and it's still very high. So these figures are really uh, you know uh, causing a con concern to any uh, cybersecurity expert. And what are the types of coronavirus related uh, spear phishing attack? So like I brought it, you know, it's scamming, brand impersonation and blackmailing and uh, business email compromise. So scamming is the most prominent attack what they're launching. So I will be discussing of those attacks in due course of time. Uh, that's around 34. This has increased. In fact, uh, as on date, it's gone to around uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent. Then is around the brand impersonation. That's around 34 percent. Blackmailing is around 11 percent and uh, business email compromise is around one percent of all. So what are the scammers taking the advantage of uh, when uh, it, it's coming around the coronavirus? So what they do is they are selling counterfeit versions of medical supplies that are short in supply. So there are a lot of online you know, sites which have come up where they're, they're trying to sell it up. They're trying to sell up uh, online uh, marketplace for this. Then they're tricking users to buying the fake cure. So even in your WhatsApp or mails, you're every day finding these kind of messages or emails coming up that there's a cure which has been found out. Okay. Then third is uh, there are they, they are you know propagating investment opportunities in companies claiming to have the cure, so that you can make a fast money, a uh, uh, quick money uh, uh, due to this coronavirus. So these are kind of tools what they're using it. They're, these are the kind of methodologies what they're using it. And what are the kind of scams? These are the treatment scams where they're offering to sell fake cure vaccines and uh, they advise on unproven treatment. Supply scams that's about creating fake shops, websites, social media accounts and so on. There is a provider scam, though I have not seen it in India, but this is a scam which is happening where hackers are supposed to be contacting people by phone and email and pretending them to be doctors or hospitals and they are asking for money for the treatment of their relatives. So this is a kind of another scam which is happening world over. And then is the charity scam. You already seen that, you know, they are soliciting donations. People are asking for, you know, a lot of non-profit organization asking for the donations. You don't know whether it's a non-profit organization or not. Uh, so uh, that's what they're doing. Then is the phishing scam, uh, which we'll, we are developing on the app scams, which are there and the investment scam. So uh, where they're offering products and services that can prevent or cure the COVID. So this is these are the type of scams which the scammers are using during this coronavirus. And these are the kind of sites. Just see, you know, anybody will fall for these sites to be original. OK, uh, uh, people are following up uh, or tracking what's the rate of the coronavirus, how it is increasing. You know, there are so many uh, sites which have come up. Uh, there are free COVID test kits sites which are there. Uh, there are information about uh, the coronavirus which is there. So, so, the, so original looking sites. Anybody will fall, fall for these scams, right? So we will just develop on one scam which is very common and which is being used. You know, uh, uh, the hackers are practically using uh, uh, Facebook Messenger 
So you have a Facebook Messenger and you get that uh, you're going to have a Netflix account which is going to be free for three months or so. You're going to have a free premium subscription. So you get a mail, uh, you get a message in your Netflix and the moment you do it, you are told to log in into your Facebook account and this is where you know they are trying to catch up your with your credentials and when you log in it takes you to a, another site this is a phishing site where uh, you know this is a fake netflix uh, offer which it's giving and on the right hand side you see that there are there is a there is a kind of a survey which you need to uh, put in and it's related to covid and it's all talking about the cleanliness habits right and any uh, anybody who is saying uh, he will say you know this is very logical this is very uh, uh, authentic let me go through it and it says that the moment you uh, do the survey we will be able to give you the netflix uh, subscription while this gentleman who is uh, on this site doesn't know that this is a site which is with the xyz you know uh, domain and once he does this right he says, OK, now you are ready to get the Netflix subscription. Uh, your survey uh, is open and, and, the, and the classic part is in this survey, whether your answer is right or wrong, it's all clicking it right. OK, and it's it's giving you uh, the uh, go to the next stage to next step to next step. And when it does that, you know, it goes to the Facebook back and it says now you uh, give this, uh, you know, uh, tell about this particular survey or the site to at least five groups or 20 of your friends and you get the Netflix, you know, subscription free. And people have fallen for this free Netflix subscription, right? So this is the kind of uh, scams which are happening because while you are free, uh, you really don't have anything to work on. You find that let me try and you know get a, net, a Netflix subscription. It's it's coming for free, and that's what they're falling for, right? Then uh, there are certain other scams, is like the malware and the phishing attacks, which are coming in. They're coming through the redirect of gateways, which are being linked to a series of you know malicious download sites, and you may get a, a update for Flash or a fake software update, and you will fall prey to downloading a malware or a fish uh, a malware onto your machine. Then you know one of the most prevalent scam is uh, the COVID-19 uh, in Canada where they had the Canadian uh, pharmacy and there was a promotion of the hydrochloroquine, uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin as a drug which helps COVID uh, fight COVID-19. So people fell in for this particular, you know, drugs and they wanted to buy only and practically this was a scam site okay and uh, well, the people lost in money uh, when they went on to them so uh, while we spoke of the scams now I, I'll, I'll shift the focus to what are the phishing and the malware and how that's happening right so uh, you know, the classic part about the covid 19 theme the activity are that they're following the path of virus when the virus was in asia the theme was towards Asia. When it is in, you know, in uh, Italy or Europe or US, the theme is also changing, right? So as the situation in various locals emerges, theme and targets uh, targets are changing. Like in Italy, they came up with a special wizard spider, right? Uh, which practically was deploying dynamic web inject files that solely targeted the Italian financial institutions and they were able to take, get the credentials of a lot of people. OK, so that is what they were doing it. And then another kind, there are a variety of malwares which are being distributed through the phishing are the modular variants that allow attacker to deploy different payload modules through the same malware. So this is see this how they are using the, the, the technology. Right and Amatoid uh, emitted ma malware, uh, which was uh, we had seen the, uh, the traces last year. We are seeing it again. And you know, the emitted was distributed in Japan, uh, claiming to be a disability uh, from the disability organization. Right. So we are seeing that those traces as well. And uh, email phishing is 
uh, most common and uh, most of them do uh, download the emitted when the macros are enabled. Lockybot, that's another modular uh, malware. And uh, the aim of this Lockybot is, you know, it steals the credentials and data. Right, so that also is quite active in this time of coronavirus. Okay, so just to give you how uh, these uh, phishing and the malwares are, so you just see there's a there's a there's a mail which has come up, come from the who.org, and you will fall in for it, and it is the in email impersonation attack, and there's a link which is included in the body, and the user who goes and clicks this link you know he gets onto the uh, newly registered website so that's a phishing website so he falls into the the uh, the loop and similarly you have you know uh, a pdf which comes to you again an impersonation so you will download the pdf and uh, you will fall prey to this kind of attack and just see this again who nobody bothers to see it is the the domain it is co.id or something like that Right. Similarly, the Lockybot malware when it came in, the classic part was the part was that it the, the way it steals the uh, credential in the data that it had an attachment, and when you open attachment, it had an invoice, right? The the users got it, and when they opened that Lockybot, uh, there was a apology for delay in sending the invoice due to coronavirus. Okay. So the the theme is on. Uh, rotating around coronavirus so that you know it's playing on the sentiments of people right similarly this is scam for the donation so they're all bitcoin wallets which are given in the mail where you know uh, uh, people are trying to uh, send the scams there's one more thing which has happened very recently so there's a sextortion scam which has surfaced again where you've been told you know, you're you being watched, uh, you have been uh, caught uh, watching a porno and, you know, uh, we saw it, we have a recording for you. You have to pay so many number of Bitcoin or we'll, you know, release that particular copy of the video. So that's also uh, surfaced out. Uh, it, it was there last year, then it's again happening in this month of April. Similarly, the credential threat again, you know, this is the site which is from the CDC. The CDC is the uh, the center for disease prevention and control and anybody who getting a mail from there it's a very valid email id or e email address or a domain and when you uh, click on it you know what it does the hacker now wants your microsoft exchange credential so the moment you click this you go on to a microsoft exchange credentials and and uh, uh, since you know that you're using Office 365, you will end up putting those credentials. Not realizing the domain on the top is a malicious domain. So these are the methodologies what you know hackers are all trying today to gain access to your data. They are trying to uh, you know uh, sniff in your data. And something on the on, on the Android side, uh, it's a uh, because. We have a lot of mobile phones with us and uh, we are all aware that there are a lot of apps which came up. So one of the apps which I'm going to just tell you is coronavirus update and it was available in both Android and uh, iOS version. And see what it is taking away the moment you do that. So uh, on the view file you on the right hand side you're seeing that uh, it allows to send uh, you know and view SMS messages but practically it's taking away all your WhatsApp messages, your Telegram, your Facebook messages, your voice notes, your contacts, your account, your call logs, right? Your IMI detail, your IMSI detail, your Wi-Fi information, right? Your any kind of information which is there. This is a just single app which is able to take all your information or upload the information, right? So be wary of all these kind of apps which have come up off late in last uh, one or two months. So we should not download these apps in particular. Now, uh, I'd like to shift now here, uh, while I told you what the threats, uh, what are the what are the phishing, what's the malware, what's the scams which are happening now, uh, what we practically need to do in companies, you know, uh, how we are actually 
worried about the security posture. Uh, how we are going to uh, overcome that? So we will be discussing uh, in, in this part of the presentation. So you know, uh, when the COVID actually had hit, what did we fear? What was the impact? Firstly, the organizations had never tested their BCP at this scale. We were ne never ready for transition and run businesses from home. Traditional systems not ported on cloud to support remote workers. Employee attendance, we never thought of in how to measure productivity, you know, in this challenging time. Right? And how do we have the board and the and the management meetings while you're working from home? How are you going to have the customer expectations? Right? And uh, and the limited capacity. So how are you going to do the business? So these are some of the major impacts. Which are uh, there now while we are being hit by the coronavirus. And just to give you some of the figures, it's that 77% uh, of the CIO worldwide are concerned about the lack of visibility of the control of the endpoints. Why? Because they don't know what laptops are coming on their network. They, uh, uh, you know, the virtual machines, the containers, the cloud infrastructure, and most of them are vulnerable to cyber attack. And to manage the complete IT infrastructure itself, there are almost 38 security tools which are required to manage the complete endpoints and the users who are working from home. Right. So these are the kind of things which are coming up, which we never thought of it. Some of the major cyber threats targeting uh, your remote workers because they are not devoid of any of the attacks which I told you earlier. Uh, there's a challenge of attack of av availability. The DDoS attacks can happen anytime. Data leakage, which we all are concerned about because of the maybe because of the accidental sharing, because some of the uh, users are BYOD. Some of the users are using the laptop, but they are accessing other sites. They are accessing other, you know, data. So how is your company data secure? Then is unauthorized access to the corporate sensitive data. Right, so that's another threat which we find out. The next is the phishing attacks and the stolen and leaked user credentials. Right, so these are some of the major challenges, major threats which are being you know faced by the workers, where the remote users when they're at home. The other point is like uh, as a as a company, as a, as a cybersecurity head or a, a business head, what do you need to do now? You are all working from home. Situation is you know irreversible right now, okay? And we don't know how it's going to happen and what's the time frame it's going to take. So uh, I've, I've tried to list it out at a strategic and a tactical level as to what you need to do at as a, as a security uh, heads. So check your business continuity plan. You may have a plan in place now. Check it on ground. Check your cyber risk management. Work on your uh, the uh, the risks which are there. Remediations which are there, mitigation methodologies which are there. Have your disaster recovery plans in place. Test them now. Your incident response to any cyber attack on your network. Like I brought it, that your network now is no more parameterized. You don't have any DMZ, classic DMZ of your uh, uh, data center or your organization. You're working in your house, which is porous. You don't know where the users are. At a strategic level, now you need to think of how the work users are going to work from home. That also has to be think thought of. It's not that every user is working from home because we are all aware that we not everyone in the industry in the company will be a user of a laptop. OK, or access to the data. At a strategic level, we need to think what access to the data we need to give it to them. Then comes the cyber resiliency where you know if you're being hit by a cyber attack and if you're not being, you will definitely be. So nobody is devoid of cyber attacks. Right then when we think at a tactical level. That's the ground level, right? 
we, we should talk of the VPNs, the capacity of the VPNs, the, the configuration of VPNs, the changing of the passwords of the VPNs. There's so many challenges because we don't have the capacity, we don't have the bandwidth to handle these kind of VPNs. Check on your remote access data policy. That should be in place. Ensure that none of your uh, data goes out of your organization. The other challenge what we are facing is most of the house Wi-Fi, so the home, home Wi-Fi which are there, they are insecure. The routers are insecure. They are still running with default passwords. How we are going to you know, take care of those? Then BYODs, your UIODs, your company devices, how are you going to handle that? If you have the MDMs, you know, how are you going to manage those MDMs? How you need to, you know, upscale those MDMs to uh, include other users as well. Have uh, encrypted emails, which is very important, and the password policies. So this needs to be very much enforced. Then is the video conferencing system. Zoom, we have seen the case. We had a real, you know, um, uh, flock on that. And uh, we need to really think on what video conferencing systems which we are going to be using in each organization needs to be taken in call. And cyber IT. That means changing your passwords, no shoulder browsing, no, you know, going on to the other sites while you're using the uh, office laptop. The end number of them when we when we develop on the cyber hygiene. So those are the things which you need to really take care of. Some of the short term, medium term thought processes which I want to give you. You know, why most of the organizations have the VPNs, they don't have the capacity to run concurrent VPN licenses. So upgrade your VPN accounts. Though VPNs is not a silver bullet, remember, because you know changing a password over the VPN itself is a challenge because most of the organizations do have you know XP's or Windows 7 and some of the VPNs which do require uh, you know uh, IE 11 to uh, change the password. That's a challenge. How do you update it now? All right. So those are the things which we need to actually check into it. While we are, you know, going on to work from home, you just can't say that we are. Everybody is given access. Everybody is getting onto work from home. Strategize it. You know, go team by team. So you'll be able to handle the situation better because, like I told you, 57% of the people or the CIOs are unaware of the complete. Uh, uh, equipments which are there in the network. They don't have the visibility. So go team by team, go flow by flow, flow. go building by building while you're, you know, migrating to work from home. Right? And you will be knowing that what are the challenges in the remote access. Then is the security patch distribution. Uh, if we are going to force it out centrally, Will your VPN network capacity, you know, cope up with it? Check on that. That's very important. Most of the companies today are uh, with, with an on-prem uh, uh, kind of environment. I think uh, it's the right time to go to cloud and uh, migrate to cloud and work from that. So that's one way. Or if you're having an on-prem exchange, the right thing now is to go in for Office 365 with the MFA. That will give you a, a multi-level of you know, authentication. Right. Then another thing which you need to think as a security um, heads, you may be running a SOC or a NOC, right? Now, how are you going to be distributing the team? So you can have two teams for SOC in particular or a NOC in particular. So if one team catches on Corona, your second team is still available, right? So that's the way now you have to think of. That because this is a challenge which is very live. It can happen to anyone. If one team member is down with uh, the Corona, your complete team of SOC or NOC will go for a six, right? The other thing which you need to think of, most of the companies, you know, the medium, small, and the large ones, they have a lot of third-party service providers, so suppliers who are there, which are logging on to your company networks. Now, how are you going to have those uh, people logging into your data, right? How are they going to be? Uh, how are your outsource resources going to be working from home? What equipment they'll be using? 
So you have to have all these thoughts in your mind. And it's worth checking your MDM licenses uh, to cover the complete, you know, uh, fleet, uh, uh, complete fleet. And if you're using a home a laptop or a desktop or a device, it's a full disk encryption is very important. Right? They should understand your users or your employees should understand that. Right? And some of the best practices during this coronavirus or the COVID-19 pandemic use two-factor or a multi-factor authentication. Have sufficient VPN capacity. Invest in data backups because this can only save you in case of any cyber attack on the network today. You can opt for a DLP services for your endpoints if required. That will safeguard a lot of your endpoints. You know, going for a SOC, going for a UEBA because you can uh, actually monitor your users, your end users, your employees as to what are they doing on the uh, on the company machines, right? Then moving to cloud is the best option. And, and remember, data privacy is the key, right? So don't lose your company data in this pandemic because if your company data goes off, there's nothing more than uh, you, what you can lose, right? And some bit I just wanted to uh, uh, give it as the security, uh, cyber security details for work from home. Ensure all your internet facing services are protected in multi factor authentication. Have SMS, patch all your remote access services. Monitor all the phishing reports which you're getting and ensure the the IOCs, the indicator of compromise which are coming up. Remote check, uh, remote uh, check the remote clients are still receiving the endpoint security updates. They should not be out of the network. Ensure all your OSs, your browsers, your email cloud clients, your software which are commonly opened, you know, they are used, they are updated automatically. Right, and also ensure you disable the plugins such as Java, Flash, and Acrobat. Right, and how individual can respond to this situation? Right, for them, some of the points: maintain a good password hygiene, update system and softwares, whatever they're having in the machine, secure their Wi-Fi router. Right, use a VPN if you're not using one. Be aware of the scams which I told you, and those scams are very live and happening. And don't mix your personal and your work on the same machine, right? And as a passing remark, I would like to say that be cyber safe and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Thank you, Mr. Uh, thanks a lot, Colonel. Uh, it was it very informative. We really appreciate the depth to which you have gone on explain everything. Now, now from the presentation, it's very clear that the cyber criminals, they are the best brain. They are smart people. They understand human psychology. And they come up with, as he explained, with, with so gullible situations that we normal people we fall into the trap. Now, how do as a user, as a as an ordinary user, you have explained very well for the corporate what they should do to protect their networks and their infrastructure. Now, as an individual, uh, what can we do to? How do we understand that this is a phishing email? Uh, are there some softwares through which we can install and protect ourselves? Is the virus protection software good enough for that? So there are a lot of questions like this from the attendees today. So if you could enlighten us, that would be great. Yeah. So there are a lot of DLP solutions which are there, uh, which do check all the phishing mails which are coming up uh, or the malicious uh, sites which are there. Uh, most of the email um, which people are using today, they have spam filters, their phishing uh, filters which are coming up, activate them, right? And uh, the other part is uh, just uh, in, in this week itself, the Microsoft, in fact, you know, has sent uh, or pushed a uh, vulnerability patch for the major vulnerabilities. So if you're using a Microsoft, update your OS because uh, hackers do try to, you know, 
uh, find the gaps in the OS and uh, try to you know attack you. The other part is any mail which you're opening with any attachment, look at with a suspicion. Don't open it if you know that it's not coming in from any known user. Any attachment which comes to you, don't open it up. Especially the PDF or the Word document. The moment the Word or the PDF document, you know, you try to open from an unknown user. Uh, believe you me, you will have a ransomware attack uh, in your machine. And uh, uh, it's the just you getting lured to those kind of mails. Uh, you will be lining up there. So you have to understand these mails which are coming up today are not just uh, phishing mails. They are spear phishing mails. That means uh, the difference between the uh, uh, phishing and the spear phishing is that the hacker would have already done social engineering on you, right? He knows who you are. Why is he sending you this mail, right? So you have to be cautious. If you are opening that mail, then it's calling for trouble. But update antivirus, have a DLP if possible, right? So uh, those things are uh, within all of our means. Can, we can do it. Can you explain the DLP? Because some of our users may not be technical. So you know, I can see uh, from the attendees that a lot of people are very common users. So they want to understand, right? I mean, so you gave some very good tips uh, that don't attach, uh, don't open the attachments and things like that. So many tips you have given. But what are the other softwares like? How do how my sixth sense will open up that this is a you know because they come up with such nice presentations as you said they, right. they do a social engineering so how do i identify that you know this is suspicious so so practically on the phishing and spear phishing mails the the mantra to overcome them is training yourself uh, you have to be your cyber hygiene has to be very perfect that you don't have to download any mail any any link which is coming to you and uh, we also train a lot of people in the phishing uh, that's the only thing which can train people not clicking those phishing links otherwise most of the people uh, the moment they get uh, a mail they will tend to you know open that link so that is the training that's the learning which one has to have and the cyber hygiene which is very important today so Colonel, if you get such mails, so where do we forward these mails so that somebody can can block these people? Somebody can take action against these people. Is there so, any forum where we can send the? So so if you're using a Gmail, so they have a proper way of reporting. So you can report it as a spam and you can uh, they have their uh, advanced threat center. Also, you can inform it to them, right? Uh, if you're an organization, if you're a in a company, and you have a phishing mail a solution which is there, right? You can forward it to your network administrator or the SOC administrator, and from where he will practically, you know, analyze it, and he can then block all the mails which are coming from those domains or the malicious links. So that is how, when it comes to the organization and individually, uh, you need to take care of uh, separately. That's nice, uh, Colonel. Also, one of the attendees asked, how can we avoid impersonation? You know, so what do we do in such cases or you know, we get caught in a ransom? So what should we do? So uh, practically you just see, I, I, I was just telling you uh, uh, the classic example of I'll take because I explained other examples. I'll take an example of extortion, which has happened very recently and uh, there are a lot of questions on the social media as well as to what they should do and uh, it becomes a social stigma if I tell that I've got a extortion mail and I'm being sent this kind of mail that I'm watching a pornography and uh, somebody has made a video about it. How do you exit that, right? So the the methodology to avoid those kind of uh, problems are number one. Uh, you know, see where that mail has come from. You can check the domain where it has come from, so you don't really don't have to worry about that mail, but take a corrective measure. Secondly. Uh, he asked me for a Bitcoin. OK, so if it is a, 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 he asked for a Bitcoin now, you can copy the Bitcoin address and there is a site called bitcoinabuse.com. OK, you post the Bitcoin wallet address on the bitcoinabuse.com. 
you will come to know what this wallet was be used for and who are the people who have already complained about you know these kind of things so like there was a mail on extortion which had come to somebody uh, which i am aware of and then you know uh, uh, when i checked up uh, that particular bitcoin wallet address there are already nine people in last 3 days had complained about that wallet right and it was the same story which was being told to them so any time when you get these kind of mails you know don't worry uh, two actions one you know first change the password of yours because somewhere uh, you know he may be trying to get access to your password second uh, is your check the domain from which it came from okay reported as a phishing domain and third check the wallet okay and you will be satisfied that there's nothing to harm there's not, nothing to be worried about you know and then you can take care of whatever the problems are like in india also a lot of times uh, on your mobile you get sms or you get phone calls which they promise so many things and it is obviously they are trying to trap you so are there any uh, numbers or indian government helplines where we should report these things you know uh, because as a responsible citizen it's our duty to report yes. these there, there, there's already already a site cybercrime.gov.in where you can report these kind of crimes which are there and uh, but the, the the problem is that most of the people don't report uh, even if they are being you know hit by this kind of uh, attack because uh, of various reasons they are not aware of it uh, they don't want to do it and that's what uh, the cyber uh, criminals taking advantage of and you know it uh, jamtara in uh, jharkhand that is the place where it's a nursery of uh, all the hackers or uh, for india and uh, they are all busy uh, in evolving a new methodology okay so don't be surprised you will start because you would have seen that there are hardly any calls which are coming up uh, of late uh, from anyone or any bank or any you know call center but of late you will start finding uh, asking for corona virus or ngo or something coming from all this uh, jamtara hackers so that will again start because they must be all doing the training as to how to go about it and how or they have to align to these kind of situations great so friends uh, i think what colonel is saying is that there is no free lunch in the world if somebody is offering you something a reward or you know like uh, i remember you know 15 years back 10 years back i used to get you know you won this lottery and this and that so please nobody is going to come and tell you that you won a lottery you have to be very very careful Now there is a good question, uh, Colonel, which has come from one of the attendees. He said that uh, you have recommended that we should move to cloud instead of the on-premise solutions. Now, according to him, I mean, and I think it, this is a uh, lot of people think that that when you are on cloud, so now you are under control of somebody else, right? And uh, you know that organization is also equally susceptible to risks and threats. so uh, i will tell you here is that uh, uh, you have to look in for your business continuity at this point in time when you are on a cloud you have shifted your responsibility to other company and definitely they they would be ensuring that uh, their risks are being taken care of their disaster recovery plan is in place while you had this pandemic and if we were being told to you know move to work from home and uh, for a couple of days we were still realizing as to Uh, whom who has to be given what access who has to be given what application access who has to be given you know uh, uh, what uh, features we were still trying to figure it out it was, it was very difficult even today some other companies still are you know struggling you know it's, it's not just overnight that uh, you had to shift it to work from home right so there are lots of because like i told you uh, uh, you are in a parameterized environment and today you are not in a parameterized environment and while you are in a parameterized environment remember that uh, you know how much percentage of your data which you are actually monitoring and to give you by the figures or your firewalls or your ips ids or utms which are there they only you know monitor 17% of your data right that is your not so data whereas your lateral data there is a east west traffic in any network you never are being able to do it 
OK, so that situation is now gone. But how do you ensure your business continuity? Right, so if you're in a cloud and if you're a MSME, because uh, you have to have those many number of people now. Change over plan, your VPNs, your you know, DLP solution, your SOC solutions. You have to all cater for when you are working in this situation. There's an extra cost. OK, whereas when you are just moving to the cloud. Your. The expenditures which would be there are retrospectively lower than the on prem model. Great and definitely the and let me share, you know, the the all these cloud service providers, they have a very strong uh, people who are controlling who are controlling all the threats and security because they can afford that if you look at Amazon or Facebook or Google. So their data center or if you look at banks, uh, there are hundreds and five hundreds and thousands of people just uh, you know, managing the networks and looking for all these suspicious uh, attacks. So they are much better. Uh, I think uh, 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 they are much better equipped to protect the uh, the ne network and infrastructure than we individually are as an MSME or or a small company. Uh, so, Colonel, what about artificial intelligence? Do you think uh, you know how can we use AI? Is it being used to yeah. control these security threats? That's right. You know, uh, the AI is uh, a major uh, use. Uh, I'll say the technology which is going to be used now and the kind of phishing mails which are coming up or the malwares which are there. Uh, the AI or the machine learning in particular, they will be the enablers to stop those attacks. So I, I'll just try, like to explain it in a manner that when we had antiviruses, we used to be all working on the signature based systems, right? And uh, any anytime you had a virus attack or there was a virus which came up, there was an antivirus company which used to give you the signature of that particular virus. Now all these phishings which are happening today. So just imagine or, or a malware which comes up. You just can't create a you know a signature based. So the the AI or the, gives you an ability to do the anomaly detection using the machine learning. So you can have detect the anomaly of the network. You can have the anomaly in the port. You can anomaly in the user in the traffic and different you know detections you can do to find out whether there's a malware attack or not. And against that, you can then take a precaution to safeguard your network. OK, so AI is going to play a major role. So in times to come, it is not going to be human versus technology or a computer. It's a computer versus computer. Right, so all this phishing mails which have been created are not just a mere, you know, phishing mail. They are all algorithms which have been run. The kind of malwares which have been written are mind boggling. The amateur, the way it behaves is, uh, is mind boggling. You know, the feature of amateur is that uh, if it is in the sandbox, it will not work. It will not open the partial. So if it's a machine learning tools which you are putting in your machine, you know, or in, in your systems, you'll be safeguarded against that. So those are the kind of things which are going to come up because of AI. Then is a UEBA, that's a user uh, and event behavior, which you can actually monitor because till now what you're doing is you're only monitoring the machine for the uh, whenever it's there in the network, but you don't know what the user behind that machine is doing. Right, so uh, still uh, and that's the area the UABA plays a major role in detecting that. What are the policies? What are the policy uh, violations the user is doing? What is he doing throughout the day? How is you know, you know, uh, trying to uh, siphon off some of the company data? So UABA will be another. That's again a machine learning based tool. So there are different kind of tools which are coming up uh, in due course of time, uh, which can actually be used and uh, they can safeguard any any network. Thanks, Colonel. Now I think we are coming to an end, but there's one question which is creeping up in so many people's mind and I see multiple questions and that is Zoom. Is Zoom relatively unsafe compared to any other uh, communication tool? Uh, 
please enlighten us on that. So uh, just to tell you, you have to understand uh, two, three things in it. Number one point, uh, the they committed for an end-to-end -end encryption, which was never there. So they could make a, make a server. Anybody could make your machine as a server and log in into it and you know uh, get onto the control. That's number one. Uh, second was that uh, the the codes which are there, you know the the meeting codes that could be created by algorithm. That's pre pretty simple. And uh, most of the people were not going with the password on and very simple password. So uh, people were able to uh, you know do the zoom bombing. So that's how. Uh, it happened and uh, the third pretty uh, interesting thing is that uh, they had servers in China. Right, so uh, that's another thing which is of concern today. Uh, and one more thing which. Is of concern because uh, the, the owner of Zoom is a Chinese. So you never know. What are the interest Western interest by any of the, the these people uh, when Zoom is actually picking up and really picked up in the month of March and uh, now it's April. So you, you never know because these are all strategy uh, problems, which these are the geopolitical issues which are there. So uh, you never know how this technology is being used by China. Well, that's right, but then it has become so popular for in these, uh, uh, you know. Why it, is, uh, uh, why it has become popular is that uh, the ease of use, right? Uh, was the most important and, and uh, any technology when we bring in one is ease of use and second is the GUI. Right, both of them were pretty uh, interesting. So you could fix up a meeting, call 20, 30 people, do a meeting, close it. OK, and they were giving initially 40 minutes of uh, uh, and they could people were very smart enough 40 minutes again, 40 minutes again, 40 minutes. So they were able to use it. So that's why it became very popular. OK, so uh, but every technology has it's got its own uh, you know, pitfalls. So I think this technology also had it and uh, uh, that's where the things have gone wrong. OK, so even for personal use, let's say where you are not discussing anything confidential, you know, so it is, it's not because but, but the other thing which I will um, uh, with a pinch of salt, I never know now that if I install a Zoom, it's not sniffing my data in my hard disk. OK, thank you, Colonel. It was it was very interesting. In fact, a lot of uh, users are already saying thank you for answering. Thank you for nice presentation. I think it was very simple. It was so detailed and you went into the details of the threats, how to prevent that, and uh, it was really very uh, enlightening and informative and very well presented. We really appreciate your time and effort to do that. I'd also like to thank all the attendees for uh, attending the session and encouraging us. And uh, Fiki really wants uh, to you to be safe and we are trying to have more such webinars uh, so that it can come to your help and uh, so that you can use the technology more effectively. Uh, we will be sharing the presentation with all the attendees. And finally, I'd also like to thank the FIKI team, especially Mr. Rahul Maheshwari and uh, Mr. Atul Sharma and Mr. Chandan, who have really worked hard to organize this webinar. Thanks everybody for this presentation. Do give us your suggestions. Uh, we will let us know what topics you want to listen to, and we'll be very happy to take up those topics in our future webinars. Thank you and be safe. Thank you very much.